welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with special guest, Kaliani, who's here to share with us her new single, One Earth. Now, Kaliani is a spiritually inspired visionary, a producer, artist, and founder of Stargate Alliance Films and Media. She hopes to inspire humanity through offering alternative visions, information, and empowering tools for self, as well as for the global soul transformation. It is Kaliani's dream to offer herself as an instrument for the betterment of humanity and uplifting of consciousness on the planet. So let's welcome to the show, Kaliani. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. What an honor it is to have you here and to talk about this. So One Earth, what made you decide that it was time to write the single? Well, it was actually a, a bit of like... Um... A a challenge like somebody was teasing me and asking me to write the song, which is this um, CEO for this nonprofit organization that I got involved with um, called Hands Around the World. And it's, um, you know, a friend of mine introduced me to them and they immediately wanted to talk to me. And I became kind of a liaison and trying to help them launch this bigger than life. Actually, it had been launched, but had kind of hit like a stagnant point with the lockdown in 2020, especially because the founder of this organization is the famous humanitarian, now unfortunately late humanitarian, Ken Cregan, who created USA for Africa, and um, which was extremely successful, still is, this nonprofit with the song We Are the World, with Michael Jackson. And then... um, he did also Hands Across America. At that time, I didn't even know that because at that time I was not in the U.S. I was still in Brazil. I I was a little bit intimidated, honestly, because to step in the shoes of creating a song uh, in the style of We're the World, which is what um, the CEO was asking me to do as um, a benefit to the organization, you know, maybe to be a carrier song for their project. And so we had several meetings on a Zoom like we're having here and um and they um they kept asking me he kept kind of teasing me I think you're going to be the one who's going to write the carrier song you know. And then I had to just get out of my head and get out of the way and let it happen you know because I was like you know my signature is not really to write songs with words that are comprehensible you know my first two releases were very ephemeral in a way, you know, very spiritual. And um, this is where the singing uh, impulse came from and more of that style of of inspiration. But I thought, you know, this is an extraordinary um, cause, which is climate change and environment. And um, I thought, why not? You know, so this was in the late summer of 2020. So I started to work on it in the fall and towards the end of the summer in the fall and little by little, the song downloaded and and then by mid-21, I started producing it. And we were actually, we were done with it last year, but I decided to wait until Earth Day. We were done, uh, me and my co-producer, Wolfgang um, Amdios, um, he's a dear friend and um, you know, we we even worked with uh, everything was remote, you know, <laughs> and we were doing the production in 2021 and we had all these incredible musicians, including uh, the Budapest Orchestra who did the strings. You know, it was like, I think, 30, maybe 50 um, violins. It was really beautiful. And a Mott Splessner who created the, you know, the arrangement for the string arrangement. He also was the first one to put notes to the song. Well, what a powerful song to bring into comparison. I know We Are the World was really about humanity coming together and taking care of each other. In your song, One Earth, you really focus on nature and our earth. 
Where the world is is USA for Africa. It was um, a plea uh, to help um, the African nation and its pro- its poverty and hunger and all of that. It is, in a sense, um, you know, um, um, it's. I guess you could say it has. It wasn't about environment, but it was about just helping release hunger. You know, and. You know, we are the world, we're the children, we are the ones to make a brighter day, so let's start giving. So in the sense of it's that style, it's just in the sense that it would be like a plea to come together. And the way the song was um, ar- organized, let's say, or the infrastructure of the song itself. Not in the sense that it was the same cause, you know, but it was a lot of fun because in the past I worked only with one multi-talented composer and he would um, play all the instruments. This time we went and made a big like collaboration and there's, um, you know, I think at least 10 different um, people who play their own instruments and and Wolfgang mixed it, you know, but the composition, when I told Wolfgang, so who's the composer? He said, well, it's you, because the song came to me, the lyrics and the melody. So when we started to produce, what we did was I sent my vo- my vocals recorded into my phone <laughs> uh, to the to a Mots, you know, and a Mots started to put notes into it. So basically, because I created the melody, I just don't play instruments, but the song played in my head. So I sang the song onto, I recorded the song, sent the recording to Amots, and then we met in his studio in Vanga Canyon. And then we, you know, he he started listening to my voice in the recording and started putting notes on it. So it was a completely different product and a different way to create because in the past, me and the composer would sit down and he would write um and I would say I like this I don't like this I like that you know it was kind of like a he was the one who was the musician but I would lead him by saying you know how about doing this and that and can you make it be this way that way and then I would walk away with the composition instrumental only and I would take it with me and I would put my vocals on it so then I would come back and record my vocals over something that was created earlier. This time, the song came down, you know, uh, in a period of a few weeks. And then I I started to, so I had the whole song and there was no instrumental. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of interesting. And then we put the instrumentals little by little. We invited um, a collaboration of several different artists, you know, for guitar, piano, uh, we had the remote uh, Budapest Orchestra in Hungary um, and, you know, all kinds of percussion drums um, with phenomenal people. And um, and then the song was mastered and we waited to release it on Earth Day. Well, I understand that you have um, nature as the backdrop. Why was that so important, especially you know, we're focused on this being released on Earth Day. It's to preserve nature. This is a call to awareness of how it's our, you know, how much damage has been done. If you look at the lyrics, you know, there's so much damage that has been caused to the environment. And that's why I have a lot of beautiful nature. So we are reminded of the beauty of the planet. And we even have animals that are endangered at the end of the video. I thought it is a beautiful um, thing to just sit in the middle of the most beautiful background in nature. It was fall and actually snow was already on the ground. This was shot in October in Northern California. and. Um, it was beautiful. I think it was North Lake. I think that's that region. It wasn't necessarily North Lake, but it, there's several lakes in that region. And um, it was on the edge of this beautiful lake. So I guess it's just it's just a reminder of, 
if we don't stop damaging the environment, that we're not going to be able to enjoy the beauty and this perennial giving that is this planet, you know, this beautiful earth home that we live in. I would agree with you on that. There's so much that we have to consider, especially at this time within human history, I feel. And when people hear your music, because I know you have such an angelic voice, with this song, is there something that you want to impart upon them? Oh, absolutely. I'm hoping to just make people inspired to participate and to understand, you know, to, to participate in grassroots movements, you know, um, nonprofit organization or participate, you know, clean up the beach day or to understand how we don't have to wait for, for the solution to come from a higher place or an organization or a, let's say more of a governmental organ, but that there's so much that has already been done by people like you and I who got inspired to do something about something that they thought was wrong, you know, and they, they, they were so inspired to create change that they, they did amazing things. Like for example, ocean cleanup is one that I bring up a lot because I'm so inspired by, um, by them. And um, it's an organization that was started up with a 16 year old um, boy from, I think, Holland. And um, he was swimming, I think, in the Mediterranean somewhere. His name is Boyan Slat. He was in scuba diving in Greece. Okay. And he saw all this junk floating, plastic pollution in the ocean. And he learned about, he said, how can we, why can't we clean this up? You know, and people just giggle around him. And it's like, yeah. And then he studied it and he did a project for school. And this is back in 2012. He's no longer a teenager. And his, his organization is huge. It's a company now. And he works with these giant ships. And he actually blocks. Uh, there are eight. He learned that there's eight main rivers in the world that throw all this garbage coming from these little villages and towns around the world in the mountains. And this garbage is coming into the ocean from these rivers. So he also has big giant boats that stop it's like a big sifter stops the garbage from coming into the ocean collects it into the the ship and and it's a continuous thing and then he has these big ships that come and collect the plastic from the great garbage patch and other locations he has done so much with it and he um he converts the plastic into other different products but basically a major recycling program. I think they also make sunglasses, glasses, frames, and things like that. So it's recycling all that junk and cleaning the ocean, which is saving turtles. It's saving, it's saving a lot of animals, you know, the fish who are dying, um, choking on plastic, you know, and birds and you name it. Um, so... These are people who are just even teenagers. Anybody can participate. So without getting away from the focus of your question is my hope is that this song will inspire people to participate and know how important the choice of one person is, like even what you purchase, you know, because supply is um, is dictated by demand. So what what doesn't sell? They stop producing. So if people stop consuming products that are packaged in plastic or stop using plastic bags, stop using straw, don't underestimate the power of one because one by one, you know, makes about 8 million that globally right now. But each one of them is necessary to add to 8 million. So your choice is very important. So you can do it in the individual way in your life, or you can participate as well. You can even start a nonprofit or start an organization to help clean the air or the ocean or, or the beaches or, you know, um, pollution, whatever, um, you know, turns you on, you know? And uh, my hope is that, that people be touched, you know, and want to do something about it before it's too late. 
That is just so impactful. In your song, you talk about we are heroes without borders. Is that kind of what you mean? Or did you have other intentions for that? No, that's what I meant. Hero without, hero, heroes without borders means that when we forget the political division and the racial division, we step into our, the greater um, aspect of us, which is we're all brothers and sisters from, you know, children of the earth, you know, one planet race. That's why I say when we we get out of the way with religious division, political division internally, I'm not saying we have to eliminate it because it's complicated, but if we live from a place inside of us that, you know, is inspired by the thought, that thought, that we all are one and the same. We all want happiness. We all want harmony and peace. We all want love. We all want to be acknowledged and recognized for our value. We all have been betrayed. We all um, have had faith and lost faith. We all, everywhere in the world, regardless of religion and race, have been initiated to the same exact Initiated initiatory processes that happen just for being human, which is a learning school. This is a school where we are brought here as souls. And regardless of the environment around you, the most important thing is to acknowledge that we're all going through the same thing. We all really desire the same thing. Anybody who has a healthy mind to any degree would like a peaceful world. You know, there are sick people out there, but it's a minority. Most people want love, harmony, peace, beauty. Um, They enjoy, you know, most people retire. And what do they do? They go travel through the most beautiful places in the world where everything, you know, feels good. You know, the weather is good. There's beautiful oceans and beaches and mountains and land and this is what we all want. It's not different because there are political borders and religious borders and, you know, racial borders. So to understand that there's so much power in living from that place that we are one and the same, you know? That's so beautiful. I just love that. I think that's so, it's such an important message. And, you know, and you also have, uh, a lyric within your song that talks about we hear you cry and here we are embracing you is that kind of calling people to let them know that they're not alone that other people are here with them yeah exactly um it is it is just acknowledging the you know the archetypal soul of the planet you know um that we're together And we're here listening to the cries of the planet. So uh, let's personalize the planet as Gaia, okay? So um, we are hearing the cries of Gaia and the calling, you know, as if the soul of the planet is asking us to wake up and help heal the damage and stop creating more damage. So you know, so it doesn't get worse for us. Um, And uh, in that chorus, um, in the song, it's basically saying, you know, and here we are surrounding you. We hear your call. We come to you like we're, we're ready. And we're, we have been, and there's more of it that's going to be done. We are hearing your call now, and we're coming to the rescue, you know, to, to save, um, like deforestation, for example. And um, I love talking. There's so many beautiful organizations. And One Tree Planted is one of them that blew my mind away when I went to check them. One Tree Planted has planted millions and millions of trees while people was on lock- were on lockdown. And um, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, and I go like the news, the traditional news does not hold space for good news. There's tremendous amounts of good news, but we're always walking with the weight 
of bad news on our shoulders and you know but this the human spirit is incredible we are so traumatized and bombarded with terrible news and it is a program that's why television programs are called programs we're being programmed to stay kind of doled down and hopeless because it's easier to control people who are you know um, discouraged but the truth is that there's phenomenal stuff being done out there and we're the ones we've been waiting for and and this is where this the inspiration for this song came because once I was asked to write a song about it you know I've always been um, a contributor to a lot of environment organizations to the best of my ability through many years <clears throat> but you know when I was asked to to write the song I dove deeper and I learned so much and I learned that there is so much out there that we have done and I became inspired and hopeful and um and this is what I hope people will understand that you know it is and most of this change that has been done has been done from people like you and I who one day just got fed up and said I am going to do something about this and I'm going to bring together a group of people who think like me, who want to do this with me. And this is how the changes are happening. It just seems so, now that there's this invitation to make that circle broader for people who maybe don't know what to do. I mean, kind of thinking, well, I, I want to do something, but I don't even know how, where to start. Exactly. So it is about listening to your heart. Um your passions, those people who are most sensitive can do the most change. The people who sometimes feel most disempowered are the ones who can, when they awaken to this realization that they matter, that their contribution is important. There are a lot of people who are about to die and all of a sudden they awaken to a new reality. They heal themselves from some disease and they go around explaining to everybody how they did it and how to do it. You know, it's whatever hurts you the most that makes you the hero, that makes you the healer, the wounded healer, right? The whole uh, concept of Chiron, you know, whatever hurts is the most. And people who are super sensitive feel like, oh my God, it's so painful. Like most empathic people feel like there's no hope and there's there's so um it's so um violent that it, it's a, it feels violent to somebody who is sensitive to see what's happening in the world not just environmentally in a, in all senses but it's important to understand that this pain can be transmuted into action and even upset anger can be transmuted into action positive action you know, uh, anger has a bad reputation, but the truth is that if we know how to transmute and convert the powerful energy of anger into positive right action that will erase um, um, s- something that is harmful from the environment or from a cause, you know, whatever cause it is, hunger homeless, um, you know, there's so much that can be done. What is it that touches you? Don't ignore it. And it's going to enliven you. Whenever we take action to participate in something that has been um, very upsetting and we don't know what to do to change it, and we take at least one simple step, you know, to contribute, it fills us with energy. It's incredible, you know. I sometimes go down to this organization that packs food for children around the world. And when I come out of there, I feel like I've been injected with, you know, new life just because I spent, you know, half of my Saturday packing foods for uh it's an organization not too far from me. And um it's called Children's Hunger Fund. And um, it's a beautiful thing. So, you know, create some time. Take one day of the weekend and go do something. Go clean a beach. Go, you know, donate, you know, 10 bucks, 5 bucks um, to your favorite organization. It's going to fill with this 
proud a spiritual pride it's not an egoic pride but it's a spiritual pride that makes you feel it elevates you it elevates your energy it brings you um it, it increases your frequency you know uh the way in which you operate in the world and it, it fills you with it's amazing it's really amazing just give it a shot and don't don't be hopeless just, there's a lot of people doing incredible things and you can just volunteer to help them and like others you can start your own if there's something there that you think nobody ever did and they should have done and you have an amazing idea bring your friends together and start it up raise funds and start an organization of your own the sky's the limit this is what i would like the song to do to inspire people to understand that there's so much power in us, you know, so much potency and power to change things around us peacefully and enjoy, you know. My goodness. I mean, I, I felt your work is just so powerful. Where can people purchase your songs? You know, the, the songs are streaming everywhere, you know, Spotify, you know, all the mainstream, Amazon, and, you know, Google. Um, you can purchase it or you can stream it. You can also go to my website, caliani.com, and you're going to see links to access the music there and um where you can buy or stream or listen to it um, that way as well. And also, if you sign up for my newsletter, I send an inspirational newsletter a month to everyone. Um, you know, and there's a, a blog session. It's called Musings. So if you go to Kaliani.com. And Kaliani is spelled differently than most Kalianis in India. Usually it's an Indian name. And it's K-A-L-I-Y-A-N-I. Instead of K-L-Y, it's K-L-I-Y-A-N-I. -I. So, Kalyani.com. Well, Kalyani, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Well, my pleasure. Well, thank you, Kalyani. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your newly released single, One Earth. If you'd like to connect with Kalyani, you can at her website. It's spelled K-A-L-I-Y-A-N-I dot com. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break, and we'll be right back after these messages. Are you chasing profitability yet losing fulfillment? Let me introduce you to your solution, The Relaunch Company. I'm Hillary DeCesar, an entrepreneurial performance coach, fearless leader of The Relaunch Company, here to help put the pedal to the metal and relaunch your business your way. Visit www.therelaunch.com. Take the free quiz to learn three steps towards waving goodbye to burnout and hello to success. The book Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis, authored by Danny Carroll, is on sale at Amazon now. Licensed psychologist and psychotherapist Tessa Antia John Guerra commented, This is one of the most empowering books on a topic of cancer you will ever read. Award winning author T.L. Needham commented, This recommended book can be understood by anyone seeking answers, hope, and alternatives to a terminal diagnosis. Buy it now on Amazon.com. Are you feeling disconnected from your life and your body as a woman? Do you feel numb emotionally and or sexually and just not sure how to feel really alive again or maybe for the first time? Are you struggling with body and self-acceptance, especially during menopause? If you'd like to reclaim your feminine and learn more about woman and gynecology and how it can help empower your life, contact Gina Cloud at www.ginacloud.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Well, we're at the end of our time today. 
I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.